Aloha. Welcome to um, Jordan's Journal. I'm Representative Joe Jordan. And today we have a special guest. Um, this show is based on having two upcoming special meetings in our communities. We have a meeting coming in June 15th, Wednesday, in Waianae District Park, um, 6.30 to 9 p.m. It's going to be a legislative town hall meeting that I'm going to be hosting and bringing my guests today. And there's also going to be a meeting on June 28th in Wahiwa at the Wahiwa District Park with um, Representative Oshiro at the Halikoa Room, which leads me into my special guest today, Representative Oshiro. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Aloha. Good to be here, and thank you for inviting me to uh, Jordan's Journal. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, could you um, tell the audience out there a little bit about you and what you do here in the House of Representatives? Okay. Well, I've been a, um, it's, I've been the representative for Wahewa Dis District 39 from 1994. Uh, so this is my 17th year. Uh, really a privilege and honor to um, be serving the constituents of Wahewa, uh, Whitmore Village, and Laonani Valley. Uh, for the past four years, I've been the uh, chair of the House Finance Committee. Oh. And this past session has been a uh, challenge, but uh, I'm grateful to be here and have uh, key, um, key members of my committee like yourself. I really appreciate your work that you did, uh, along with the rest of the members, but I really enjoyed having you on, on my committee. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was a learning experience for me, but I, I'm a numbers person, so I really love finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we're here today to promote our, our meetings up and coming this month and talk about the budget and what happened this last legislative session. Okay, well, I think um, um, just as a teaser, I think um, maybe I can kind of start by telling people that this was an extraordinary year. Um, being the chair of the Finance Committee back in 2007, I tell people this, that uh, back in 2007, we had about a $730 million surplus. Wow. $730 million That's surplus. That's a lot of money. That was back in 2007. And my uh, cohort in the Senate was, at that time, um, Senator Baker. So at that time, we were like um, Santa Claus. People yeah. really loved us, uh, coming in for all kinds of requests. We could expand programs. And of course, in the, under the, the, the um, governor at that time was Linda Lingo. So we were able to put more money into human services, health, the Department of Education, mm. University of Hawaii, community colleges. People loved us. Yeah. Uh, but then in 2008, uh, the whole world changed, right? Yeah, With the uh, crash of the uh, uh, stock market, Wall Street, the banking fiasco, the whole world turned and they went into the Great uh, Recession. Yes. Uh, the greatest recession uh, of all time since the 1930s. And so it was global in effect, and here in Hawaii, we also were impacted. So we had a cash carry over balance of about 300, $330 million at the end of fiscal year 2008. But going into the 2009 session, we faced a $2.1 billion oh. shortfall with a B, $2.1 billion shortfall. Wow. So we need to address that. Mm -hmm. And people can recall that there are a lot of cuts being made to human services, health, yeah. DOE, and other, other programs. Uh, some small tax increases in the higher income bracket, uh, hotel room tax, and higher income uh, real property conveyances. Mm. And then we took back some of the um, very generous tax credits, uh, high tech uh, loopholes uh, to balance the budget. We thought we were out of the woods. We thought we did fine. Uh, back and, in 09. And then mm. back again in 2010, we faced a $1.2 billion shortfall. Wow. The economy was still sliding, gas prices were still going up, oil crisis still. Uh, in effect, Hurricane Katrina, um, I mean, you know, the Gulf oil spill, all the effects going on right there. Yeah. So we had to struggle again in, in 2010. And so now we enter into 2011, you know, things look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, things to be in the, inc uh, you know, increase, things are getting better. A new governor, mm -hmm. a, a positive change yes. in the air, a lot of optimism. And then you have the terrible tragedy in, in March with yeah. the uh, great uh, earthquake and tsunami. Yeah and the effects of tourism and then the you know, effects on the market in general. Yeah. So we faced the, uh, about a billion dollar shortfall uh, again. That's, that's rough. And so it was a time for, you know, such an you know, interesting time for people like you to come in, yeah. uh, Representative Jordan, <laughs> but uh, appreciating your, you know, your, your input. Yeah. But we've, been, we've been facing challenges for the last several years, you know, mm -hmm. about $3 billion in, in cuts mm -hmm. to government services. So what we did, and there's a graphic that's available, I think, I don't know if it's, it's available, but 
to talk about the biennium budget for the next two years, July 1, 2010 to uh, June 30, 2013, mm. uh, budget cuts and lapses are comprised about 47%, just about half. Wow. Half. Uh, so that's that's cuts to programs and services. We had to make those hard, Ooh. tough decisions. Yeah, those are some tough decisions. Um, about a third came from some tax revenue increases. Mm. And I, I tell people that, uh, to be honest with them, but these primarily came from those people who have exemptions from the GET. Uh. I don't think people know that there are several businesses out there who have a GET exemption maybe going back 20, 30, even 40 years. Wow. Uh, and I think it's time to be reviewed then. But in this case, we looked at some of the exemptions mm. and said, hey, all businesses should be treated fairly the same. Yep. They all should be. And there should be no reason why they should get an exemption. So for two years at least, we will have these businesses pay you know, uh, 4% uh, GET. So that's another portion of how we did it. And again, we transferred uh, excess funds, mm. surplus funds from different accounts, and we tapped into the rainy day fund. Okay. Uh, and also made available to the governor uh, the Hawaii Hurricane Relief Fund as another source. And then we also transferred additional uh, non-general funds uh, to balance out. And that's how we addressed the uh, $1.3 billion uh, shortfall. For the current biennium budget? Yes. Yeah. Oh. That goes to June 30th, 2013. My understanding, we, we were kind of short on the current budget too, weren't we? Yes, yes. We also had to address the current fiscal year, which ends on June 30th, 2011. And we did it in several, uh, several ways. Uh, first of all, the governor imposed a restriction of about 2%, which equates about 10% uh, less uh, quarter um, a restriction, which had a tremendous impact upon the departments. Mm, yeah. And really to their credit, I think they did a, a, a terrific job of holding back. Uh, we also used whatever remaining balance we had, about $40 million of the Hawaii um, um, Rainy Day Fund, and that was also just to balance, yeah. uh, to take care of additional expenses and to take care of some of the uh, contracts of the temporary assistance of needy family children. That was also uh, used for the current fiscal year. Uh, so that's where we uh, primarily found the savings just for the current fiscal year that ends June 30th. Wow. So not only were we looking at creating this new budget, the biennium budget, but we were also tasked with having to help close out the current budget. Through. Yeah, yeah, and I think part of it had to do with the fact that the previous administration overexpent uh, some of the federal monies that were uh, allotted for the temporary assistance and needy family mm. programs. Uh, for those of you who remember, uh, last year I, I went into a, um, a public debate and, and a discussion and battle with the then director, uh, Lillian Kohler, on their expenditure plan, and we kind of well, we, we told them that they would be uh, probably run into a deficit mm. uh, if the federal monies did not come in in uh, October of last year, and it did not come in. Wow. Um, uh, so it was a false assumption, and that because of that, they had to have uh, additional monies to balance out this year. But uh, we addressed that. We were able to address that using the rainy day mon yeah. monies uh, to address that uh, shortfall. Wow. That's kind of... Some rough task force there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it was tough going, but I think, you know, to everyone's credit, um, Representative Jordan, is that people understood, number one, that these are tough choices, mm -hmm. um, that there are no free lunches, mm -hmm. and that we all need to hold together and pull together and think about the least of those out there. Yeah. Um, really, those who don't have much or uh, little, if any, mm -hmm. and trying to address those needs. And I think my philosophy has always been uh, basically, number one, uh, health, human services. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, uh, lower education, in general education, department of education. Uh, then you get into the University of Hawaii uh, community college systems. But primarily, health and human services. Yeah. The basic needs, you know, food, shelter, clothing, and then yeah. pr provision of medical services. Yeah. And I think that's where we've put our limited resources in those areas. Yeah. So, Representative Oshiro, how did we balance the budget without increasing the general excise or personal income taxes? Well, what we have here is a chart that was prepared by the House uh, Finance Committee staff, how the budget was balanced uh, 2011 regular session. Let me just walk, walk through it really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, across the top is a description, and then you have different uh, columns here. First of all, budget cuts and lapses, uh, about $750 million, and that's basically cuts to the current appropriation made last year to the uh, uh, the budget. So the restrictions, contract cancellations, uh, non-filling of vacancies, putting restrictions in expenditures 
uh, those things all added up to uh, about $750 million. There's also what we call non-general fund uh, changes, and those are basically transfers of excess funds that you have uh, in, in different special accounts, mm -hmm. special balance accounts. And I think people need to understand that there are special accounts, there are revolving accounts uh, that we do keep uh, uh, control over and we have authority over. Mm. So in those instances where we had excess balances, we felt that they were proper to transfer to the general fund oh, okay. to help us balance. And we did that uh, in about $117 million. We also went back in and looked at the money that was coming in through the uh, TAT or transit and accommodations tax, mm. hotel room tax and took some of the excess monies that were then going to the Hawaii Tourism Authority uh, in consultation with Mike McCartney and the okay. Tourism Authority of Board and Executive Director of what excess monies could we use for general funds mm -hmm. uh, beyond what they need for operations and for marketing. So we took that money there and we also uh, capped the uh, TAT, the amount that goes to the counties. Wow. Every single county mm -hmm. gets uh, a portion of the TAT, you know, Kauai, Hawaii Island, Maui, Oahu, and in consultation, again, with the mayors and respective uh, budget committee chairs, we said we're going to cap it for a while to 2015 and allow you guys to keep this amount of money. Uh, we'll take the excess money to help us balance. Mm -hmm. And so we worked that out with them, about $117 million. Uh, there was a small, again, tax revenue increases, primarily from the uh, repeal of the general excise tax exemptions yeah. uh, for businesses and different enterprises that have not been paying the GET tax, believe it or not maybe 20, 30, yeah, 40, 40 years. <laughs> yeah. And so we want to impose that for a period of time. Also to temporarily limit the itemized deductions for high income uh, taxpayers, mm -hmm. the upper 2%, which yeah. are you know, very high income level, and also the uh, uh, tax deduction uh, amounts uh, for high income individuals. Uh, that was also um, um, uh, deferred for a couple of years. And then we also had transfer of various other accounts and some cutting, and then we also took the money from the uh, uh, rainy day fund, about forty million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, and about one hundred seventeen million dollars from the hurricane relief fund, yeah. excess funds uh, to help us balance. So that's how we did it without raising the personal income tax, yeah. without raising the general excise tax. Yeah, I think that's you know, most of people's concern is I'm going to pay more taxes yeah. <clears throat> either via GE or personal. Yeah, and I think what people didn't understand, they always say, well, it's only a 1%, but, you know, 1% uh, increase of a 4.5% general excise tax is about a 25% increase. That's yes. a big increase in the tax. And a 1% increase, uh, GET would raise anywhere from 550 to $600 million. Wow. It's a very potent um, means of raising uh, income mm -hmm. for the state or tax from the, for, for public services, uh, comprising just about half of the uh, state tax uh, receipts comes from the GET. Wow. About a third comes from the personal income tax. Yeah. So it's a very potent uh, uh, way of raising funds mm -hmm. with the GET, general excise tax. Yeah. But that wasn't our focus to do that this year. No, no, no. no. Uh -huh. we, we decided to go back in. Again, the biggest component of our tax strategy here was to look at um, the uh, exemptions yeah. that actually were touched upon by the last three or four tax review commissions, nonpartisan. Wow. A panel of economists, uh, tax preparers, uh, tax attorneys, uh, CPAs, mm -hmm. who recommended that we look back at these exemptions and to see whether or not they make sense yeah. and if they're fair for all, all other taxpayers yeah. paying the GET. Yeah. And I, th I think that was a lot of the discussion we were um, having in committees regarding that. You know, is it fair? That's right. You know, where some of these businesses are paying their 4.5%, where some were getting zero. <laughs> That's right. You know, yeah. And, yeah. In fact, one, one of the businesses is, is Hawaiian Airlines. Yeah. You know, let me mention that. Um, because back in 1991 when we set it up, there were, there were several airlines. Uh, there was Aloha. Yes. And I think at that point in time, we were trying to support the local inter, uh, intra-island uh, uh, airlines servicing the local people. Yeah. Well, since that time, uh, Aloha is gone. Yeah. We, all, we have Hawaiian Airlines right now. And for all intents and purposes, Hawaiian Airlines is the only intra-island service mm -hmm. provider. And to some degree, they have, they're the only ones out there. So we thought it's about time that they pay their fair share, yeah. uh, being the only intra-island yeah. uh, airline servicing yeah. the uh, Oahu and uh, neighbor island you know, friends. Yeah, that's correct. I, th I, I think it was a very fair process. Yeah. But again, most of these incentives are only for two years, right? That, that's correct. So right now, the um, repeal of the uh, GET exemption is only for two years. Mm -hmm. 
And in the meanwhile, we'll also be looking at the different other exemptions for other books, other credits on other books, and maybe other rates mm -hmm. that need to be adjusted you know, to, to suit the times and, and the needs we have today. Wow, uh, that's a big task. S especially when you know, we were describing earlier that over the last two or three years, we'd yeah. already cut almost what? Three billion? About, about, about three billion. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, uh, it, it should be pointed out, and I have my notes here, if you don't mind me referencing this. The, in the area of focusing on human services, we did provide money, about $13 million, mm -hmm. to assist our, our, our uh, friends mm -hmm. uh, from the Compact of Free Association uh, States. Wow. Uh, these are people from the uh, Marshallese, uh, Truckees, uh, Gilbertese Islands who come here based upon a, a compact with the United States of America yeah. because of what uh, we did uh, to their lands and their waters, uh, and to their culture mm -hmm. by using their areas and their lands for uh, nuclear um, uh, armament testing. Mm -hmm. So we, we put money there to make sure they could come here and get proper medical, medical treatment yeah. and care. So we have that. Uh, we appropriated additional monies for a preschool open doors program, about oh. uh, four million dollars. Yeah, to make, good sure, program, yes. yeah, to make sure the young families, yeah. challenged families, mm -hmm. have a uh, head, you know, um, heads up on getting their kids into a preschool. Yeah. Um, we also looked at providing additional monies to uh, upgrade the Medicaid uh, enrollment system yeah. to make sure that people who are properly applying or eligible get into the system. Yeah. Those who are not uh, eligible stay out of the system. That's correct, yeah. So I think that that's very important. Uh, $3 million of general fund monies will leverage uh, yeah. 27 million in federal money. So yeah, it's a that was, great... That was a win-win. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, you know, yeah. you know it's a great, uh, you know, program there. Mm -hmm. um, we also put into play about $150,000, again, to match about 1.5 million in federal funds wow. to establish an electronic medical record system. So we can keep track mm -hmm. of medical services and one's medical file wherever they go in the uh, state health healthcare system. Wow. And of course, we spent about $3 million for homeless services. Yep. I think every community, every island, every place mm -hmm. has a pocket of ho homeless people. That's correct, yeah. And yours, uh, Representative Jordan, yes. I think on the line, island of Oahu at least, mm -hmm. probably has a majority of those, those folks out there. Yep. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had enough money there to provide for um, some of the uh, assistance programs going out there, the outreach programs, and mm -hmm. try and mainstream them yes. into the institutional care providers out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you have to get, put some money out there. Yeah, you have so, to. And I think it's important, especially when you see families out there with kids. Yeah, that's, that's a really tough one, yeah. Yeah. With the kids, yeah. Really with the kids. Um, Department of Health, uh, $2 million again for early intervention services, mm -hmm. helping the kids, uh, those who may be uh, susceptible to abuse, uh, living in really tough, challenged uh, households. Uh, we also put in $4 million for veteran services. Yeah. Another uh, important issue, you know, yeah. You have a lot of veterans in yep. your community, mm -hmm. so, so do I in Wahiawa. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure that they have enough uh, access to programs for services, mental health services, yep. post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. and also to take care of uh, the burial sites that we have oh. uh, in the cemeteries and the memorials uh, throughout the state of Hawaii, on the neighbor islands especially. And we also put in additional monies to make sure that the State Historic Preservation Div Division Mm, you know, under yeah. the direction of um, local boy um, yeah. uh, Bill Isla, who's yes. now director, William Isla, uh, Department of Land and Natural Resources, has the personnel mm -hmm. to maintain a certified historic preservation program that will meet compliance uh, with yeah. the federal standards. That's correct, yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand that it does have an uh, important economic development mm -hmm. factor. Yes, it does. By allowing for permits to be approved, yep. right? Yes, that's a very important department. You need to have yes, it, right? Yes, we know, need to have it, yes. And, and address the needs of the indigenous folks and the EV mm -hmm. and yep. the you know, inadvertent discovery. So we, we kind of put our money in those those key areas that we could take care of basic human service needs, health needs, uh, those who are challenged, the, the young. Uh, we want to make sure you had, had those programs in place. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that we have these big, huge departments that take a bulk of our budget, like you stated earlier, human services, health, you know, public safety, education. I mean, those are really key components when those, when those other components get kind of left to the side, the agriculture guys, the 
the Department of Land and Natural Resources. I mean, the smaller departments, it's kind of hard to cut those guys back when the bigger ones really need those services. And it sounds like, you know, he did a lot of work balancing that and you know, it, making it, the tough calls. It, it, was, it was a tough call. Even the Department of Education uh, also took a, a cut from their mm. request. And one of the areas was in the uh, area of school transportation, you know, school uh, bus service. We yeah. put in uh, enough money for their first year but with the stipulation that they come back in and report to all of us, oh, yeah. uh, you and me, yeah. and all, all the senators and representatives, mm -hmm. uh, sometime in fall, on their plan uh, to rework the contracts or, uh, or revise a system yeah. of providing bus service uh, for those in the rural areas, yeah. neighbor islands, mm -hmm. and special need uh, yeah, students special need, yes. uh, without running us broke. Mm -hmm. ah. And so we, we did that. That, that, you know, and, and talking about that, it was just interesting. I was talking to one of my principals, and since I learned that during finance, I asked, well, how many students actually get bus to school? And he said 80 to 100 out of a 900 enrollment. Uh, I was just amazed. Yeah. And he goes, but you can't cut it because most of our children are in the rural areas that mm -hmm. the city bus doesn't even service. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah, but we want to make sure they come back to us. So there'll be an opportunity mm -hmm. um, for them to come back in fall mm -hmm. with their report. We want to make sure that they're not being, uh, I'll use the word, gypped or, or uh, taken advantage mm -hmm. of or, or being presented with adhesion contracts mm -hmm. uh, where there's a lack of uh, competition mm -hmm. on the bids that are, that are made available to the uh, request for proposal process. Uh -huh. So I think that kind of helps them in a way uh -huh. that we'll be providing some oversight. Uh -huh. And I, I kind of got that impression from you that let's give all these different departments their opportunity, you yeah. know, and then come back during the intercession and say, hey, you know, we need a little bit more here. We can give up a little bit more there and, and how those different items are actually working for them. Yeah, in fact, we uh, did that in the budget. You know, there's about $88 million uh, that we did not put into the uh, executive request, or the governance request. And that's basically to uh, reflect the fact that we're, go we're going to go into assumption that the governor is going to enter into collective bargaining agreements and contracts with the remainder of public workers. Oh. And they will be um, uh, going with a 5% pay cut or a budget restriction or some accommodation within their contracts. Mm -hmm. And so that amount of money uh, will be, um, well, that, 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 that notion provided for us to find additional savings in the budget. Oh. And how the departments go and work that out will be up to them. Mm -hmm. For example, um, at, at, Right now, there is no settlement with the teachers, Hawaii State Teachers yeah. Association, Unit 5, so about 13,000 members there. So the budget that we've allocated in the departments, uh, there is a provision that allows them to transfer monies huh? to accommodate mm -hmm. that uh, final decision. Uh, same with the United Public Workers, uh, wow. Unit 1 and Unit 10, uh, who are uh, you know, janitorial staff, custodial staff, mm -hmm. also uh, uh, adult correctional officers. Uh, that hasn't been resolved yet also. Wow. But the money uh, amounts are there to, uh, to, to reflect the fact that we believe the governor will get the same uh, type of contracts mm. as HGA wow. of a 5% uh, savings yeah. uh, with, with the 50-50 uh, EUTF yeah. uh, uh, employer-employee uh, yeah. uh, split. Same type of So on, on this budget, uh, we made the greatest effort not to have furloughs any longer, right? Yeah, we, we did. In fact, we took the position that, um, you know, and, you know, again, uh, working with the governor's mm -hmm. office, keeping in touch with the governor's office to go with the belief and understanding that the governor uh, would get the same uh, type of savings, a 5%, mm -hmm. uh, from the respective uh, public worker, worker unions and have the savings reflected in the budget, the expenditure ah. plan, mm -hmm. but that there would be no furloughs. Yeah. Oh, wow. that's great. I mean, all those different components working this time. I, I yeah. think, you know, we had yeah. the best opportunity this year in moving forward. You know? Yeah, I, I, think, I think we did. I think it's now the time uh, that we gave the new administration the opportunity to go retool, mm -hmm. uh, reevaluate, mm -hmm. and then resize government. Yeah. And I think we've also given them additional monies to go and bring a, in a uh, chief information officer mm. uh, directly, uh, uh, directly accountable to the governor's office to see where technology can be brought into play. Oh, yeah. To see if we can find efficiencies or, if, or you know, or connect all the departments yeah. uh, up a lot better. So I think the tools are there, the availability is there, yeah. and the resources are there to make these changes. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the, the new administration does. Yeah, we'll have to see that. Oh, you know, like we're running short on time here. Um, I'd like to really thank you, Representative Shiro. It's been a pleasure. Hmm. Uh -huh.
talk so much and I really enjoy your company. Again, this is a special prelude to both of our up and coming community meetings. Um, I will announce mine and I'll give you an opportunity to announce okay. yours. Um, my up and coming meeting would be um, June 15th, which is Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Waianae District Park multi-purpose room. Um, my special guest will be Representative Oshiro as well as the governor at that um, event. Governor. It'll be a Yes, wow. yes. Kind of got lucky with that one. Um, we're going to do a, a wrap-up. I can't wait to come yeah, out to the Waianae yeah, Coast. Exciting. Yeah, And then you have a meeting coming up. Um, yeah, mine is on the uh, 28th of uh, June mm -hmm. uh, at the Waianae District Park Holly Core Room. Um, come early and, and have some uh, chili and rice and oh. hot dog and homemade desserts. Uh, stay late. Oh, hey, I'm coming for the food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a definite. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I'd like to thank you for um, coming to Jordan's Journal and I'd like to have you back again soon sometime. Uh, my, my, my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess that will wrap up our show for this afternoon. Uh, I'd like to say again, mahalo to Representative Oshiro and we will see you soon. Aloha.